Hello and welcome to our online service for this week. We do, of course, have in-person services taking place today at Bally McKinney Road, Drogheda at 10 o'clock and at 12 o'clock. Now, I do know that uh, people watch the online service for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's because people are working and can't get into the in-person services. Uh, other people are off sick. Uh, we have increased numbers of people with down with COVID at the moment uh, because of this fresh wave. Uh, we also have people in different parts of the country and even other countries that join us for our online service. And then there are others among you I know who do attend the in-person services but like to just log in again, maybe to hear the word again, to hear a different special song uh, and, and such like. Well, I've experienced a little bit myself of what it is to have to rely on the online service in recent weeks. Janice and I were away on holiday uh, celebrating our wedding anniversary and uh, we missed two Sundays there. And then when he came back, I was supposed to be preaching and I was off sick with COVID. And then uh, last Sunday, I had a long-standing engagement to preach at Grace Church down in Cork. And today, I'm off in Sligo. I'm, I'm leading seminars today at the New, My, New Wine Bible Week in Sligo. So I will be back in Solid Rock next Sunday for the in-person services. And amazingly, it, that will make it six weeks since last time I was there for an in-person Sunday service. And I have to say, well, apart from the lockdowns when none of us could get to church, that's the longest I've been missing from church since we founded Solid Rock back in January 1994. So needless to say, I am really so eager and keen to be back worshipping with the church in Drogheda next Sunday morning. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, worship with us in this online service. And uh, we do have one of our other pastors, Pastor Andre Kadima, is going to bring us the word of God today. We've got worship, we've got a special song. And I really pray that the Lord will speak into your heart and minister to you through this online service as he has been ministering to me in online services in these last few weeks. So let's worship the Lord together now with our worship team.
Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because this sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the justice satisfied to look on him. Behold him there, the risen Lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is on I with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. Behold him there. To great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood. My life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior. My Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. I titled my today's message, Fear God, Not Man. The world we live now has never been so prosperous, so advanced. So we see it in in the areas like, you know, uh, research or health, technology, information, etc. For, uh, for example, today we have access to information like never, never before. You can choose to watch, you know, the news on RTE, um, you know, BBC or Sky uh, or other uh, independent broadcasters on YouTube, you know, to help you shape an opinion. Now, this should bring us long-lasting joy, right? That's not what we see looking at the society of the developed countries. You know, uh, there is still a lot of hopelessness and despair out there because all these novelties, gadgets and so on can and will never, never fix, you know, the real problem. And the real problem is a heart problem. Heart problem that only God can fix. Only through Him can we find rest, peace, hope, and everything that we need to give us true joy. Although there are uh, novelties and progress in many areas, we notice um, current phenomenon that, you know, should make us reflect is the and disguised you know at 
attack on the church, uh, on the Christians, and on the message of the gospel. And the goal of all this is to silence, is to silence by intimidation, um, you know, violence or death um, in some case. To chalk the truth message of the gospel and, you know, to silence the influence of those who proclaim it. That to go. A few years ago, uh, you know, when we heard on attacks on Christians and the gospel, uh, it often came from a distant land, distant land, you know, in the Middle East or China, uh, Muslim countries, etc. And this is still the case today. Always with the same objective, you know, of cutting the influence of the Word of God and of His people in those areas. That's the reason uh, why Solid Rock as a missionary church uh, continues, you know, to, to work and support our brothers and sisters uh, who are facing persecution all around the world. Um, you may remember for those of you who were there on one of um, the Monday nights, uh, we had David Turner uh, from Church in Chains uh, visiting us. Uh, their ministry keeps up-to-date information, you know, of the persecuted church uh, worldwide uh, and encourages us, you know, to pray and support them. We can see that pastors, you know, pastors are being arrested, put in prison, and sometimes, you know, are sentenced to death because of the gospel. We have this story of uh, Peter and John in the book of Acts, uh, Acts uh, chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. So we have the story of Peter and John before the Sanhedrin. Now, the Sanhedrin was the supreme court uh, in ancient Israel. The court had about 70 members um, uh, plus the, the ruling uh, high priest, so 71. We know that um, Caiaphas uh, was the high priest of, of the Sanhedrin at the time of our Lord's uh, trial and execution. So by reading this story uh, of Peter and John before, uh, you know, this uh, Supreme Court, you know, uh, the members of the Sanhedrin had the same goal the same goal, to silence and stop, you know, the gospel. That was the goal. That was their goal. And if you, um, you, you, you just go through the story, um, you, you know, the, 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 or, or, or the, the, the high priest or the, you know, the, the member of this court, um, you know, when they faced with uh, Peter's bold proclamation, uh, of the gospel, including his indictment, you know, of them as the murderers of Christ, they had to decide, uh, you know, how to stop the gospels, um, how, 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 to, how to stop the message of the gospel, how to, to stop the apostles' evangelic ministry, how to do to stop it. That, that was the, the problem they were facing. But seeing, you know, the, um, the confidence of Peter and John, uh, they were amazed. They were amazed. Uh, they, they, they began to confer among them, themselves, uh, saying, what shall we do uh, with this man? For the fact that a remarkable miracle happened through them is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it does not spread further among the people, let us warn them not to speak to anyone in this name. And they forbid them, you know, to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. That was the goal. That was the plan. And they continue, you know, uh, but, but um, neither could they, you know, turn them loose to continue their exploding ministry. So instead, they try to bully Peter and John into giving up the preaching of the gospel 
altogether. It didn't work. That didn't work. And the next verse, um, it's in, in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse mm, chapter 4, verse 19 to 21. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. When the heart threatened them further, they let them go, finding no basis actually, you know, to punish them on account of the people because they were all glorifying God uh, for what had happened. So, the scripture do not tell us, you know, do not tell us what the Sanhedrin, you know, threatened to do to Peter and John. But, you know, that it, 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 does, it doesn't matter. No threat, you know, could change their commitment to preach the gospel, to, to, to talk about Jesus. The apostle, you know, defied, you know, the court by appealing. That's why that, 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 that's just amazing. You know, they defied the court by appealing to the very authority and the Supreme Court and the Sanhedrin was supposed to represent. This supposedly, you know, an educated and an entrained man um, had confounded and exasperated, you know, Israel religious elite. You, you might wonder if uh, in, in this um this situation uh if peter's response here contradict um what he, he would um later write in his first epistle um you know when he says uh, in first peter chapter 2 verse 13 uh, when he said submit yourselves for the lord's sake to every human institution in that passage um, it goes on to explain how it is uh, ultimately the Lord who put authorities uh, in place. And th that your faithful submission to the gospel builds up, you know, the credibility of your testimony. But when that authority commands you, you know, uh, ask you, force you to stop speaking the name of Christ, the name of Jesus, uh, you know, um, to stop teaching, uh, you know, the message of, of, of Christ. When that's happened, you know, if this same authority um, asks you to stop preaching or to do something immoral, something unjust uh, or uh, unrighteous, you cannot obey you can just not obey. As Peter himself would later, um, later on explain to uh, the Sanhedrin on another occasion uh, in, the, on, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 5, verse 29, we must obey God rather than men. You see? That, that, that we need to, to understand the difference. We have to obey the authority, but when the same authority starts asking us, you know, uh, to violate, you know, the laws of God, to stop preaching or um, the gospel, um, so in this case, we cannot obey. Amen. So we see the same conviction in the life of Daniel. Okay? If you uh, read the, um, the story of Daniel, uh, under normal uh, circumstances, Daniel had no difficulties, you know, to difficulty to submit uh, himself, you not know, submitting to the authority uh, the Lord had placed um, over him. In fact, he excelled and prospered, you know, under pagan leaders, putting his God-giving skills to good use at their service. But when that authority contradicted, you know, uh, the law of God um, in Daniel 6, 
Daniel had no choice but to obey the Lord, um, you know, to obey God and face the due punishment of the law. So Daniel found himself in, you know, the same situations. He was working, you know, he was under a pagan king, you know, and he was submitting to uh, the authority, he's submitting himself to the authority, but when the same authority asked him, you know, you know, to, um, uh, to do something that contradicts the law of God, Daniel just refused. He refused to do that. Now, as I said earlier, the, the world today has become, you know, more hostile, you know, to the truth. You know, you can see it, you can hear it, you know. Um, uh, it may not be long, you know, uh, before more Christian face, you know, similar consequences for preaching the gospel. Uh, I want us to realize that, you know, the stories we used to hear from uh, Muslim, communist countries, etc., now are happening in Western countries. We are talking about countries built upon a Christian principles. Just go read, you know, um, some of the Irish or American constitution. God has been the foundation. The Irish constitution even talks, I was amazed about that, uh, talks about Jesus Christ. Now look at what is happening today. We now have laws in place preventing the teaching of the Bible in the classroom. For those who work in hospital, you know, um, it is forbidden to preach the gospel. I even saw a video on Facebook where uh, guards were arresting a group of people preaching the gospel on the street in Dublin. They didn't, you know, the guard, they didn't state a reason, but it makes it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. These are the sort of things that make us, you know, realize that we are being more and more persecuted. There was a recently um, a case in the U.S. Supreme Court uh, of a Christian uh, football coach that lost his job uh, for praying with players after games. So his name uh, is Joseph Kennedy. And this man's job was suspended uh, because he refused uh, to stop praying on the field. Making an appeal, you know, um, after making an appeal in 2016, the Supreme Court, you know, ruled that the school had violated the constitutional right of the coach and he won his case. These are just some examples. So we have a lot of examples, but just, just some, some, some of them, uh, I want just to, to, uh, to throw them. Um, that, you know, there is opposition to the gospel in the Western world now. There is um, battles going on. The enemy now is not hiding anymore, you know, um, so he want to silence, he want to silence Christian. He want to silence, you know, to kill, to choke the message of Jesus Christ. And we, we need to be aware about that. So what does that tell us? We need to be uh, resolved not to cave into the pressures of society or even, you know, uh, to fierce persecution and violence. So we need to have the same attitude as on the apostles Peter and John. When persecution comes or, you know, when we are silenced, uh, we cannot give in, you know, to the pressure or fear. We need to faithfully obey God, no matter the cost. We need to obey God. I believe we are, you know, living in the end times, you know. The Lord is coming soon. For those who are still playing church, uh, who claim to know God, but, you know, with uh, their actions, uh, deny the power of it. 
as we can read in the, the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 16. The time has come, you know, to put things in order. To put things in order in your work with the Lord is very important. When Jesus comes, you know, he will take us by surprise. Will you be ready, church? Will you be ready? Now is the time, you know, to decide to work with God and not to work in the fear of man. We must stay strong in the Lord, church. We must stay strong. Do not be afraid, you know, um, the, the, the Bible tells us, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Amen? Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. That Matthews chapter 10, verse 28. There might be a lot of oppositions, that for sure, a lot of oppositions. And, you know, uh, it, it will become harder and harder. We will find opposition, you know, uh, opposition to the message of Christ, the gospel, and even uh, you will find opposition in your in immediate family, you know, your spouse, children, uh, parents, brothers and sisters are putting pressure on you, int intimidating you, you know, to stay silent, to keep it quiet. Maybe they no longer welcome you. You know, or maybe they, they laugh at you, you know, at you for, for your belief. That's maybe something you are, you are going through. I, I want just to encourage you, church. If it's you, don't give up. It might be very hard and painful, but your reward will precede you in heaven. Be strong. Trust in the Lord. Amen. That doesn't mean that, you know, you, you have to go outside straight, you know, uh, straight away and then start ch shouting the name of the Lord on the street. No, that, 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 that not really what, what, what I mean. Um, the Bible teaches us, you know, to be wise, to be wise. What I mean is that you should first pray and ask God. Amen. He is the one who creates the opportunity. He is the one who will give you the right words, you know, at the right time. He is the one who will position you, you know, at the right place at the right time. He is the one who will open doors, you know, who will bring opportunity. You will be the tool on his holy hand. Amen. So don't be afraid. If the Lord put on your heart to speak or, or to pray, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That means he is, he is with you, okay, and desires, you know, to accomplish something great. So you, we need to trust him, you know, and not to be afraid. But as, you know, uh, the world grows more hostile, you know, to the truth of Scripture, we can expect those kinds of persecution to become more commonplace. But I praise God, you know, because by God's grace, we are still enjoying our freedom. Not all believers, you know, face harsh legal or physical persecution for their faith. Many of us, you know, don't live under, you know, the threat of being beaten for preaching the gospel. Let us remember as well, you know, um, opposition creates opportunities, you know, to boldly proclaim the truth to persecutors, as we can read in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. So I pray that... Um, you know, in any situation that you are facing now, um, you know, any pressure, any uh, intimidation, that the Lord will be your strength. The Lord will be with you, will guide you, will give you peace in all those situations. So keep trusting in the Lord 
don't be afraid. Keep your eyes on the Lord, on Jesus Christ. Fear God and not man. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Thank you to uh, Andre for bringing us that word. Uh, just to emphasize that as we are in our summer break, uh, July and August, while we continue with our Sunday services, there will be no Monday night service and no Thursday night Bible study in the church premises until we start them again in September. However, we are continuing, of course. We do have our Sunday services every Sunday, 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. And just during the summer period, when some people are away and whenever there's uh, some of the midweek events aren't happening, I would encourage you to uh, make the most of the time we spend in the church cafe in between services. So if you come to the 10 o'clock service, plan to stay behind, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, slice the cake, fellowship with a few people. And if you're planning on coming to the 12 o'clock service, why not come in a, a bit earlier? Because between uh, b between 11 and 12, we do have that time when the cafe is open and you can mingle with people and chat with people. Uh, we also are continuing, of course, with our online services. Uh, we have the online Sunday service, which you are, of course, watching. We also have our Wednesday night Bible study online every Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Uh, we also have our Take Fives that go up every day, Monday to Saturday, a five-minute inspirational message from the church. And also there's a one-minute daily prayer for Ukraine, a one-minute scripture and prayer that we post up. Now, all of our online uh, offerings are on our, available through our website, www.solidrock.ie, and through our Facebook page, Solid Rock Drogheda. And the, the one-minute prayer and scripture for Ukraine is also available through TikTok, through uh, Evangelical Alliance Ireland's TikTok uh, page. So uh, we are also continuing with our 24-7 prayer. Uh, that's one of, the, one of the subjects that I'm teaching on up in the Bible Week in Sligo because what God is doing through prayer with our church with this continual unbroken prayer for over two years is now beginning to really be noticed by other churches around the nation that are wanting to do something similar. So we are continuing with our 24-7 prayer and you can log on for an hour on that. Uh, you, you, you can log on to the rotor through our website or through the link that's on our Facebook page as well. I want to thank everybody who is giving to the church. Most of you give online and the IBAN, the big number, and that, that's all up on the screen if you want to give online. You can also give by PayPal. There's a link for PayPal on the church website. Or if you come to the in-person services, we have offering boxes on the back walls and you can give by putting your, your tithe or offering into an envelope and dropping it into the offering box as well. Uh, simply uh, want to say thank you however you choose to give. Thank you for your incredible faithful support for the work of the church and for extending the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it simply remains now for me to close by, uh, by saying the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.